Hello everyone, welcome to Examrat. My name is Shatavdi, I'm a second year medical student. So today we're going to be discussing about a unique property of light that is refraction. In our previous lessons we talked about reflection, we talked about image formed by spherical mirrors through reflection. So today we're going to be talking about another property of light that is refraction. Okay, so let's just go over the definition of refraction. It's very simple. It's basically the bending of light when light passes from one medium to another. So bending of light when it passes from one medium to another. Okay. So, the thing is that this medium that I'm talking about, it is categorized into rarer and denser. Okay. So, obviously, rarer means that the molecules are sparsely spaced, right? And denser means obviously the molecules are more closely spaced. So whenever light travels from one medium to another, it can be this way also and it can also be this way. So accordingly, the light will bend. Now, we know that whenever we talk about incident rays or reflected rays, we always consider a normal. Like the calculation of the angle of incidence or the angle of reflex, uh, reflection, both are compared on the basis of a normal, right? So in refraction 2, we are going to be learning about angle of uh, incidence, angle, angle of refraction also with respect to normal. So now when I'm talking about the bending here, it is again with respect to normal. So what is happening? Basically, if I say that there is water here, and a ray of light is coming, so this is air, this is water. So air is obviously the rarer medium here, and water is the denser. Okay, so we again draw a normal. Now, remember that even if it is not showing in the diagram here because I'm drawing with the help of a pen tap, but when you draw always the incident point and the point at which the normal is drawn should be same. Okay, so yeah, so now what exactly is happening is that I'll just try to join them. Yeah, so now when it is getting refracted, so either it will move towards the normal or it will move away from the normal. Now, what is how do we determine whether the ray is going to move away or? going to move towards the normal. So basically, when light travels from one medium to another, rather when light travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium, its, its speed decreases. So when light travels from rarer to denser, its speed will decrease. Okay? And if and if something's speed is decreasing, then obviously it, it is becoming slower, right? So you can understand that if light was moving, following this path, so after going into the water, it will like reduce its speed, right? So it will move or bend towards the normal, like. something like this okay so why because its speed is reducing right it's not 
again moving with the same intensity. So now it is slackening a little and moving towards the normal. That is how I remember it. Okay. If light travels from denser medium to rarer medium, obviously you can understand what is going to happen. Its speed is going to increase. Right? So if its speed increases, so you can understand what is going to happen. It is that it is destroyed. Now it will move away from normal. Okay. So, okay, so yeah, you always have to like divide the, you have to show the medium, obviously. Otherwise, how will people understand? So, tensor, letter. Yeah. So, just moving away from the normal. So, in this case, air is obviously there and water is obviously denser. So, what is going to be the refracted ray? The refracted ray is going to move or bend towards the normal. So, you know that here, this is I and this is R. Then moving from rarer to denser, angle I will always be greater than angle R. And from mo moving from denser to rarer, angle R will always be greater than angle I. Here you have to remember that R is angle of refraction and angle I is, remains the same, which is angle of incidence. Okay. So now we again come across laws. Laws are very important, they govern how we perceive things. So again, which I told you before while studying the law of reflection, that the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal to the interface of the two transparent media at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. So angle of, sorry, point of incidence, say he, normal, hoga, and also refraction, so they are all on the same plane. Here, instead of angle I being equal to angle R, there's a different for, uh, there's a different law known as Snell's law of refraction, which says that the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant for the light of a given color and of a given pair of media. Okay, so what does this mean? Sine is a function, right? We've uh, learned about it in mathematics and trigonometry. Sine is perpendicular by base, uh, sorry, perpendicular by hypotenuse. So here it's basically saying that Snell's law states that sine i by sine r equals to a constant mu. Now this constant is known as the, ang uh, the refractive index. So we'll come to the discussion of refractive index a little later. So for now we just have to remember that for a give for a light of a given color and a given pair of media, like only when we have stated that medium one is air and medium two is water, only for that specific pair of medium and of light of a given color, like you know that with jar. So light can be of varying wavelengths and varying frequencies. So for a given light of a given color and a given pair of media, sin i by sin r is equal to a constant mu. Okay. So now we're going to study about refraction through a glass lamp. So uh, when we talked about refraction through a, through water, light was just refracting once. But here we are going to see that light is kind of refracting twice and ultimately the emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray extended. Okay, so this is like the proper diagram. Now, if I draw it in an improper way. So yeah, we are taking the incident ray. We are drawing a normal obviously all at the same plane. So, air, say, glass. Matlab, again, rarer to denser. So, kya hoga? That it will bend towards the normal. Right? And now, the time has come for it to undergo a second refraction. 
okay so now it is from glass to air means for rarer to uh, sorry from denser to rarer so this was rarer this was denser okay i'll just uh, draw i'll just write glass inside so that it's easier so glass is denser here so at first light is going from rarer to denser so it is bending towards the no uh, towards the normal then second one so we can like name it also i sorry so this is i this is r1 this can be r2 so now in the second case light is moving from denser to rarer right from glass to air so now what will happen it will obviously move away from the normal right since they are ray diagrams don't forget to ever put arrows they are very important so this angle is basically called angle of emergence so now what's happening is that we are extending the incident ray so what we find is that incident ray extended and emergent ray are parallel to each other this distance between them this parallel distance between them is known as lateral displacement okay so uh, you all will be asked to draw the simple diagram like refraction show me through refraction through a glass lab what is important here is that you have to always name the angles you have to always put the arrows and you have to make sure that the emergent ray is always parallel to the incident ray extended that is all okay so here you're noticing something known as mu here it's mu g means refractive index of glass and here it's air so it's refractive index of air okay so what is refractive index the extent of the change in direction that takes place in a given pair of media may be expressed in terms of the refractive index okay so it means that when we discussed about snell's law we said that sin i by sin r equals to mu right and this mu was the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium so now what is exactly this refractive index it is the extent of change in direction matlab how much the light has bent after refraction it it will always be dependent on what was the medium before and what was the medium after right so it is always going to make depend on that so the refractive index always will be with respect to mediums okay secondly you know that the bending depends on the speed right like the speed of light traveling through air and the speed of light traveling through the second medium or it does not necessarily have to be air it, it can be from glass to water as well so one thing you have to remember is that light travels fastest through air then it is fluids and then finally it is solid okay so the the uh, magnitude is somewhere around in air it is 3 into 10 to the power 8 in fluids it is 2.5 into 10 to the power 8 and in solids it is 2 into 10 to the power 8 okay so light travels fastest in air and the slowest in solids okay so now another way to calculate the refractive index is basically when we compare the speed of each other like the speed of light in medium 1 and the speed of light in medium 2 so now the refractive index can be linked to an important physical quantity as i told you the relative speed of propagation of light in different media it turns out that light propagates with different speeds in different media as i told you before so what is it saying is that we can also define instead of this formula there is another formula by which we can um find out the refractive index and that is basically 
you write mu or refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium. When you write this, you can say that it is basically equal to the speed of light through the first medium by the speed of light through in the second medium. Okay. So, this basically gives us the refractive index. Remember, I'm always saying the second refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium. So, if light travels from air to glass, you will basically, by using this formula, you will be getting the refractive index of glass with respect to air. Okay. Similarly, if you reciprocate it, like if you do it as S2 by S1, you will get the refractive index of the first medium with respect to the refractive index of the second medium. As simple as that, you just have to put the speeds. Now we come to absolute refractive index. So the term absolute means is that we are specifying one of the denominator or numerator of the ratio. So what are we doing here is that we are basically saying that medium 1 is vacuum or air then the refractive index of the medium 2 is considered with, considered with respect to vacuum. This is the absolute refractive index of the medium. So if we say the speed of light in air is C, then what refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first will be? Let C be speed of light and V be speed in medium 2 since light is since air is the medium 1. So what is going to happen is here we will do as C by V. So C is constant here right. So basically what is the importance of absolute refractive index is that we can always find like for example, it is given that refractive index of um, say the second me uh, refractive index of let this be water. Okay, let medium to be water. So if it is given that refractive index of water with respect to air is this, refractive index of um, glass with respect to air is something, then what is the refractive index of glass with respect to water? So I'll just give an example here. So the question is refractive index of glass with respect to air is C by X refractive index of water with respect to air is C by Y find out the refractive index of glass with respect to water. Now, what do you think is it going to be? So, what we do is, is simple. We basically just divide this by this. So, mu G W is basically mu mu G A by mu W A. So it will give us C by A into y by c which is y by x. Simple. Okay. So, see, you uh, in this case you know the speed of x and y and that is why we could have directly put it but I am saying that in some questions they will just give you this, this value like they will just tell you that Refractive index of glass with respect to water is say 1.33. Refractive index of water with respect to air is, sorry, 
this will be 2.3 rather and this will be 1.3 so what is refractive index of glass with respect to water so basically what you have to remember is this formula so you can just pause the video and take it down okay so our more or less discussion with refractive index is done here now we move on to another unique feature excuse me and that is spherical lenses okay so a lens either convex or concave lens has two spherical surfaces so i'm sure you're familiar with lens because we talk about it in our day-to-day -day lives like this um specs that i'm wearing they also have lens they're also made of lens now which lens is it we are going to discuss it in the next class so yeah before that let's draw so the most basic lens is concave or concave or biconcave lens or biconvex lens like when i'm saying biconcave or biconvex i mean that we are putting two spherical surfaces like here we have put two convex surfaces together and two con two convex mirrors together rather and here we've put two concave mirrors together to get concave by concave lens and by convex lens okay there are other type of lenses also there is plane or concave which is one side will be plane mirror one side will be sorry this is plane or convex and this is plane or concave we have concave or convex which is one side concave and the other side convex we have convex or concave which is one side concave convex like the reflecting side and this so yeah so this is all so mostly we are going to be dealing with biconvex and biconcave lenses okay so we got to know that be it a convex lens or a concave lens we always have two spherical surfaces each of the surfaces form a spa part of a sphere we've talked about this when we have discussed about spherical mirrors in case you've missed it you can easily just go and uh, like get it in our channel they're all free of cost so here obviously you know that when we talked about one single uh, mirror it was always a part of a sphere so here we are dealing with two mirrors so obviously two spheres are in question here right so something like this so two spheres so if there are two spheres, you have to understand that there will be two focuses, there will be two center of curvatures, everything will be twice in number because we have, we are dealing with two mirrors here. So the center of these spheres are known as centers of curvature. They are usually represented by the letter C. So there are two, so it will be C1 and C2. Okay. Also, Also, you know that focuses will be also two. There will be two focus F1 and F2, right? So another thing that um, is to be discussed is that we knew that um, radius is twice of focal length, right? So we can also demarcate the point center of curvature by writing as 2F. Like if we denote F, point F as the focal point, then we can write center of curvature as 2f like it is a convention why am i telling you this is that when we deal with the ray diagrams it will be easier for you like many in many cases um, the teachers would prefer if you write 2f in, instead of uh, c so c1 and c2 is given now what we have to understand is that which is the c1 and which is the c2 okay so we deal about we talk about image formation by convex lenses okay so as you can see that 
in this picture i had said that we are dealing with two spheres right so this is the like i'll just draw it here yeah so if this is a concave lens then obviously you can understand since this one is the is, will be towards your object so this is the first like this is the part of this first sphere right so what we can say is that this will be f1 and this will be 2f1 in the same way here will lie f2 and here will it lie 2f2 so you have to understand that which is the first and which is the second focal and it's 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 not like it's going to help you in calculation or something it's just easier to memorize that since this is the convex this is the first surface you're dealing with and since the sphere is drawn like this so obviously this will be the first this will be f1 this will be 2f1 similarly since this is the second reflecting surface f2 and 2f2 okay so now we are going to be dealing with image formation by convex lens so first is at 2f so we knew by our knowledge of mirrors that whenever we second whenever we deal with a uh, object placed at center of curvature then its image also comes exactly at that point with exactly at that size so the difference between a mirror and a lens here is nothing but in mirrors there was reflection in lenses there will be refraction but since we are reducing the distance between the two mirrors in such a way that the refraction is very negligible so what i'm trying to say basically here is that if, if this is a parallel ray parallel to the principal axis and this was the imaginary normal let's say and this is the reflection refracted ray and then again the emergent ray now the thing is here you can understand the bend right because when you extend the incident ray you'll understand this but if we reduce like this there's the significant difference but if we reduce the thickness of the lens in such a way then this refraction will be very very negligible it will almost be like the ray has reflected completely it will be almost straight so that is how we are going to be like if you see these pictures you'll understand that the reflection the refracted amount is very very less okay so here we come across instead of pole basically what we say here is that when we draw a convex lens and we draw the principal axis we draw an optical center here and the rays are passed with respect to the axis of the convex mirror or uh, convex lens sorry okay so our first case was how an object was kept at 2f and so now we know what's going to happen see the main properties will remain same and that is that after after the parallel ray gets reflected in this case refracted it will pass through the focus and the ray which is passed through the focus what will happen to it you know it will always okay so this case is not given here but again it will always be the same oh yeah it's here third case that anything that pass uh -huh, sorry it's given here sorry that anything that passes through the focus no i think they missed uh, the so anyway even if it, if the case is not given here you know what's going to happen like when rays from infinity come obviously they will always focus at a point right but instead of the first focus so instead of the second focus here is f2 
the rays will converge at the first focus due to refraction of light. So that is the difference. Like the rays are coming and they are getting refracted as a result of which they are converging to, to a focus only but of the opposite side. So that is what you have to remember here that due to refraction it is happening on the opposite side but it is happening on the at the same places. So that is how you can correlate between image formed by spherical mirrors and image formed by uh, spherical lenses. Okay. So we get one ray here and so now we knew that a ray passed through the optical center huh. so basically it's a little inaccurate but when you basically extend this rather and you will pass something to the optical center then you know that it will go undiminished, it will pass directly. So the image is basically formed at 2f but on the opposite side. So if in concave, this is 1, 1, 2. So the object was at 2f2 and the image is formed at 2f1, it is of the same size, it is real and it is inverted. Okay. So what we have understood here is that any ray that passes through optical center of a convex or a concave lens, it will go, it will be reflected, reflect, sorry, it will be reflected undiminished. There will be zero refraction. If you put a normal here, angle I will equal to angle R equal to zero. So we get the image here. Okay. The second case, object placed between 2F and F. So, two F, two F two rather, F two, F one, two F one. So, if the object is kept kept here, this is the optical center. When you're drawing the images, it should be accurate, absolutely. So use rulers, of course. So again, the same thing. Oh, don't forget to put arrows. So parallel rays will pass through focus and rays through the optical center. Sorry. So basically what is happening is that it will be formed beyond 2F. So as and when we are talking about this, something is similar to the, it's like the position of the image and the object. It is similar to those that we talked about in mirrors, right? Just the, just here refraction is taking place. Otherwise, you can see that the object, sorry, that the image is again formed beyond 2f. Like even if it does not look so, if you take the proper accurate ray diagram, you can understand here that the object is being formed beyond 2f, right? Just like we did when we were drawing the images formed by concave lens. So yeah, also an interesting thing that the same things that used to happen for the concave lens is happening here, uh, for, sorry, for the concave mirror is happening for the convex lens, right? So like here, it, uh, when we talked about mirror, the concave mirror was the converging one, right? Here, the convex lens is the converging one. So if you relate and study like this, it's going to be very easy for you. So what is happening here? Here the image is real, inverted and enlarged. Okay, now the third case and the most easiest case, we have kept the object at F. Obviously, after refraction, 
it will the image will be formed at infinity again real and vertical enlarged finally the virtual image will be formed when the convex lens is kept between f and o so what is going to happen here here the rays are not going to be met really because here a virtual image will be formed so parallel layers passing through f again being extended backwards then ray through the optical center passing undiminished again extended backwards forming the image okay so now image will always be in dotted lines remember that so yeah so here what happened on the same side of the lens we got which makes it virtual so virtual erect and enlarged so it's if you correlate it with the learning of the concave mirror you'll be able to realize that it is the same the same things are happening only refraction is happening here instead of reflection and it is being the image is formed on the other side of the lens because here we have two center of curvatures we have two focal points we have an optical center okay. so this was a new concept for us so let's just stop here in our next class we'll be discussing about image formation by concave lens we're going to talk about the mirror formula for sorry the lens formula rather we're going to talk about the magnification that is caused by a lens we're going to be talking about the power of a lens and then we're going to conclude by some exercises. So thank you for watching.